I'm absolutely delighted to welcome Kiki Mazzucchelli, um, curator, art historian of contemporary art with a specialist in Latin American art, working between London and Latin America, very intensely, <laughs> if I may say, <laughs> illustrious curator and art historian. Um, so Kiki, thank you very much for being here and giving us your time and thank giving you. a bit of a, an interesting overview on panorama of Latin American art today and it's a total pleasure, thank you very much. Um, so um, I'd like to kick off this, this conversation here by reading out to you a quote by uh, the author, the author um, Laura Hopman, who um, wrote something very interesting that to me sort of helps to, in other words, define Latin American art nowadays. And I'm, I'm going to say to you, in the beginning of the 21st century, she writes, an era of customization in which selections from a most infinite array of choices are collaged together to create personal soundtracks, social groups, menus, histories, and canons. The most interesting artists are the mixers, mashes, and sewers together, the coolers of irreproducible one-offs. I think that's quite interesting in terms of like starting this conversation. Um, mashes, sewers together. I think that's quite interesting mm. when it comes to Latin American art, a bit of a mishmash. Um, and leading on from that, I think my first question to you that I'd like to focus on will be referencing something that the Brazilian gallerist Luiz Estrina said during an interview um, to me at Freeze this year in October. She very interestingly said that Latin American art appears to be very interesting for the Europeans and the Americans because somehow, in the case of Brazil, doesn't have proper academies, art academies, that would pave the road, as she said, for, you know, for sort of your education, sort of, you know, shaping your vision um, as an artist. So, um, would you agree with that? Mm, I guess, uh, <laughs> I mean, it, it's a bit hard for me to comment. Of course, uh, yes. Because I don't know uh, the context. Yes, yes. Of, you know, like within which she was saying this, if she was referring to contemporary or modern artists from Brazil? Contemporary art. And I think she was with a particular focus on Brazil. Mm. She, I suppose what she was trying to get at, it was the fact that um, Brazilian art can be very transgressive, I suppose, Latin American art, and, and you know, intuitive, um, inventive, um, because there aren't academies you know, such as in Europe, for instance, with very strict set of rules as to what you should be doing and sh what you should not be doing. I thought it was a very interesting kind of point of view. Um, and in her view, it is one of the reasons why Latin American art can be or look very interesting in the European eye. Uh, that was a question that I posed to her. So, <laughs> I don't you are allowed know. to disagree. <laughs> um. I wouldn't say there aren't uh, academies. I mean, like uh, you mean art schools, yeah. Yes, yes. I think, I uh, very... especially within the past, let's say, twenty years, with the kind of you know increasing professionalization of the art circuit in Brazil, I think the uh, the art schools they start to play a more prominent role. Right. If you know what I mean. Right. Like, so it's a kind of like seal of approval yes. if you did your degree at yes. I don't know FAP or. Right. Whatever. You right. Know, I think um, there is a certain degree of um, academicization. Right. Say, yes, that's a good that's, word. Yes. That's a word. <laughs> You've just invented it. That's yeah. good. Yeah, yes. <laughs> but but in, would you say that it's quite recent in Brazilian? It's quite, I mean, of course, there are lots of artists, like very prominent artists, um, more like established mid career, like, or even. No, that came from the, the, these same art schools right, at right. a certain you know, like point in time, like previous to 20 years ago. But I think the market and the circuit has changed a lot. Right. And would you say that if you were to build sort of a, a parallel with other Latin American countries, would you say that is the same in, in, in terms of uh, becoming more professional? Yes. Having those academies? In? Uh, let's talk about, I don't know, Bolivia, Paraguay, or Peru, Colombia. I think there are different cases. Right. Um, I would say Bolivia is still, you know, a bit more, you know, a bit of a smaller right. circuit. 
But if you look at, let's say, um, Colombia, within right. uh, the last 10 years, for instance, it's quite booming, it became isn't it? like, yes. oh, the yeah. new Brazil. Right. Oh. <laughs> yeah. uh, so I think that there has been change um, in some countries, like mainly um, Argentina, Colombia, Brazil, right. Peru, right. um, Chile to a certain extent, but still very, you know, much more restrictive, right. I would say. Um, and then countries which were, you know, one country that was previously like a major player in the right. uh, Latin American circuit, uh, Venezuela, Venezuela, it's completely no, it's wiped completely, out. Completely, yeah. So, which is a real shame. Yeah, for other reasons, but yes, yeah. yes, no, absolutely. Whether looking at installations by the Brazilian new concrete artist Elio Chisica, whose installations are very famous and, and, and very much recognised in the sort of London art context, I mean, he had exhibitions at the Whitechapel Gallery, for instance. Um, I think, but I think it's probably fair to say that he's one of the most well-known Brazilian artists in, in London, for instance. Uh, or artists like Alexandre da Cunha, who is Brazilian-born but London-based. Um, Fernanda Gomez from São Paulo. Laura Lima in Rio de Janeiro, uh, in Mexico, Gabriel Rico and Jose Davila, whose works I absolutely love. Um, there's a level of um, spontaneity, inventiveness, improvisation, and the use of um, really interesting materials that you could say that may have been disposed or neglected or forgotten you know, in our everyday lives. And somehow they bring those materials back to the forefront and make them noticeable. Um, certainly when I look at Alexander de Queen's works, it's something mm. that is, you know, it's very clear there. Um, and they become almost sort of iconographic symbols of Latin American, you know, of Latin America's everyday life. Um, I'd like to you to kind of have your reflections on the materiality aspect of these works of art by some of these artists, which I find very, very interesting, whether it's attire, you know, rubber, uh, leather or recyclable material or just, you know, a um, piece of textiles, mm -hmm. something that speaks about memory, feelings of a particular region, you know, that's something that speaks very loudly to me when it comes to Latin America. And I what I've seen, for instance, a freeze this year, you know, pots and pans, as in mm -hmm. Chio yeah. for instance, absolutely, which is absolutely, you know, incredible. Um, how would you reflect on the, the materiality aspect of Latin American art? in the last 30 um, years? I mean, it's, it's a very kind of... Very broad, yeah. Very, very broad, broad question. Um, and I think um, what you were asking specifically is about a certain lineage within... Yes, uh, yes, yeah? yes, yes. Because you could, you know, you could look at a different lineage of artists yes, who work absolutely. with... Yes, no, absolutely, no, absolutely. Like bronze, for instance. Yes, no, no, absolutely, yes. So, um, in relation to these artists, um, I think perhaps Alexandre da Cunha is a good example because he's actually he's actually been working in London for more than twenty years now. 20 years so, by now yes. I mean, if you yes. think of it, the objects that he's using yes. as ready-made are yes. Yes. objects found in this context. Yes, they're not typically Latin American. Yes, and I think there's a very um, they have very different ways of. Um, dealing with um, found materials, let's right, say. Right, right. Um, so Alexandre, he's a sculptor primarily who works with um, found materials. Yes. Um, and I think it's quite curious that, uh, I mean, he intervenes a little bit, um, but I, I don't, I wouldn't say his, um, there was a word that you used in your question, uh, um, spontaneous or spontane spontaneity, in, in, yeah. yeah, improvisation. Yes. Yeah, impro I think on the contrary, he's very rigorous, right, as right. a sculptor. Right. Like um, my impression is that he selects these forms like in a very kind of rigorous way, and the way he employs these forms yes. is also very mm. rigorous. And I would say it's completely different from. Uh, Fernanda Gomez's way of working. So Fernanda is someone who normally works like in situ. Like, so she has all these materials that she collects. Right. And also intervenes on them, like uh, mainly with like white paint and like sanding down. But she, and, and she really does respond to 
um, the conditions of each space right. where she right. shows her work. So uh, she spends time in the space, right, right, uh, building the work. Right. It's um, interesting because once I spoke to Alexandre, I had this chat with him, and he said that at times, depending on the object, he would intervene very little. Mm -hmm. And I love that, that, that aspect, the concept where he treats the object, he almost leaves the completely originality of it. Yeah. Like the um, cement maker that mm -hmm. Tay Britain acquired from him, I think, many years ago, right? I used to be in one of the permanent yeah. galleries at Tate, I'm not sure if it's still there. And it has that kind of element to it. And I've said to him before myself that some of his other works incredibly, look incredibly stylized, <laughs> and he quite liked that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's what I mean, you know. Very stylized, he... but somehow, you know, because you see that kind of the rawness of it. He's very specific about the kind of objects that he selects, you know, like he has like extreme attention to form. And, um, and we were having this uh, conversation the other day about, because Alexandre has been doing lots of public commissions recently. Right, that's right, yes. Yeah, um, London on the ground, I suppose. And, yeah, uh, and yeah. he did a big project, I think, last year at the MCA in Chicago, at the plaza that's right, in yes, front. Yes. And, um, and it's, I think it's uh, amazing the way that he can um, um, kind of produce big scale work without yes. simply supersizing. So yes. when he, for instance, with the MCA commission, like, you know, he had this big kind of um, concrete mixers, like from trucks. Yeah, but it, absolutely yeah. enormous. <laughs> but it, it's still like a found object. Yes, yes you know? absolutely. <laughs> but that's what I mean, bringing objects to the forefront, mm -hmm. like people would have completely neglected or disposed or you know, mm -hmm. or forgotten about. I mean, we in our everyday life, we wouldn't be thinking about these objects. But I think there is a big tradition of right. found materials mm -hmm. in art history in general. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say it's a specifically Latin American mm -hmm. trait. Right. You know what I mean? Um, there are some, you know, many works of art that I've come across recently by artists, and many of whom were showing a freeze. Um, Luis Estrinas, Ajinchu Carioca, some objects really kind of struck me for um, bringing everyday life into a different mm -hmm. context. You know, as I said, objects that will bring a memory from everyday life. Um, you know, objects that, of course, if you're in London, you wouldn't necessarily notice these objects, they wouldn't be there in the streets. But if you go to Sao Paulo, you perhaps you'd have more, more space and you'd have more abandoned industrial mm -hmm. spaces and you can see that, whether it's a, like a very old car, you know, and sort of the metal bits left there and com completely sort of, that would not be allowed in London even mm -hmm. to be exposed to an extent, whereas in, you know, in, in cities like Sao Paulo, you'd, you'd have that. You yeah, know? definitely, I think. And I see that's what I'm trying to get at. Yeah. That almost speak about the fabric, the cultural fabric of Latin America or Brazil? Yeah, I think definitely the context, um, you know, like everyday context, informs your work if you're an yeah, artist. Yes, yes. So, you know, inevitably, you know, there is a certain degree of influence of your, you know, like environment. Yes. You know, depending on what you pr produce. I mean, like, yes. maybe like an oil painter. Yes. I mean, that doesn't really no one. make much of a difference. <laughs> <laughs> And, and of course, they would elevate those objects mm -hmm. when they bring into an art context, yeah. whether they're pots and pans, for instance, you mm -hmm. know, um, and sort of um, referencing the everyday life of Rio de Janeiro, the Carioca kind of scene, mm -hmm. art scene. I can see there's a big divide between Sao Paulo and Rio. Sometimes when I look at artists that are based in Sao Paulo and artists that are based in Rio. Do so you see that? <laughs> I see that division. Um, I still see the division. Mm -hmm. In what? No, I'm interviewing. No, no, no. no, 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 no. I, I think that in terms of, you know, I don't, I don't like stereotyping and generalizing, but I think that the um, aspect of color, mm -hmm. texture, um, absolutely. I think sometimes the works of art by artists from Rio, they can have that kind of more color, more humor, mm -hmm. you know, can sort of tell the everyday Carioca life. And in Sao Paulo, is that somehow there's that kind of darker, more, strictly more modernist mm. sort of tradition, you see, uh, mon monochrome, mm. that notice, you know, brutal, which is 
you know, it's got a lot to do with the history of the city. You know, brutalism, brutalism is massive in Sao Paulo. Mm -hmm. So, um, yes, I think there's still a lot of difference in spite of the technology and the, you know, um, you know, it takes only, you know, six hours to travel yeah. to, to Rio from Sao Paulo on the coach or if you're flying, it's 50 minutes. So, you know, but I think there's still major differences there.